Well, the U.S. has gone off the rails, it seems, because they claim, as everyone now knows, that the Syria conducted a chemical attack that hasn't been proven, and it seems unlikely being that Assad had been winning the war, was on the verge of winning the war. There was going to be negotiations, uh, peace negotiations, which would have decided the ending of this war, finally. But, so, the, the U.S. decided, well, we should drop cruise missiles, and the odd thing is, is apparently the air base that they sent the cruise missiles into is operational again and had been operational within like 24 hours or so. Meanwhile, the Russians and Iranians put out a memorandum of some sort saying that uh, they this crossed red lines and any further actions will be met with force. I don't know if that's true because concurrently to this, there's a senator in the Duma in Russia that's saying that Russia has no plans to confront the United States. It's almost like they're going to fight around each other, but yet each side has opposing goals. The Russians want to, of course, keep the Syrian government in power and keep their interests safeguarded in Syria, being their naval base, uh, avoidance of the U.S. being able to build any gas pipeline, maybe building their own gas pipeline, certainly avoidance of the uh, of the US sponsored pipeline being built but yet both sides uh you know the, they talk and talk and talk and I and I'm glad that they don't want to go to war but it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen that they talk around each other they're both allegedly fighting terrorists although the US might have different groups in mind it's just the whole policy has become so ridiculous. So we'll see what happens next. But um, meanwhile, the U.S. sends a ship over to North Korea uh, with the aircraft carrier <laughs> at the same time that this is going on. And yet people can't understand, even they can't grasp the concept that fighting Russia is a whole different level of everything from what we've been doing in the past.